Welcome to section three, part seven of the MSP Foundation Certification Training. In this section, we will deal with the assurance theme. There'll be four questions in the exam from this theme out of the 34 questions for the various themes. We will understand the assurance themes purpose, key concepts, documents and roles, as well as its relationship with the seven MSP principles. Also the nature of assurance activities and the drivers of assurance and how to plan the assurance activities, as well as the need for assurance at the multiple levels and the three lines of defense for assurance. Shortly, we'll begin understanding the purpose of the assurance theme, then the connections between the theme with the seven principles. Also in this theme, we have the assurance approach as part of the program strategy and an assurance plan as well. We'll also take a look at the concept of assurance itself and the three lines of defense for assurance. And lastly, we'll describe the nature of assurance activities, including the drivers of, for assurance, how to go about planning successful assurance activities, including the success factors for assurance. And lastly, the need for assurance is multiple levels with the three lines of defense. First, the purpose of this theme. The assurance theme deals with the roles and responsibilities related to assurance and the three lines of defense. And it also covers the assurance approach and how it supports the overall governance for the program and how these assurance activities need to be planned meaning the assurance plan. Assurance is a discipline that provides transparency and confidence to the sponsoring group that the program will meet its objectives by focusing activities on the most risky aspects of the program. Meaning because program deals with change, it is subject to several risks. And how will the program deal with the most risky aspects need to be clarified so that the confidence of the sponsoring group is better thereby the program will meet its objectives. A lack of assurance or a poor assurance will prevent the program from meeting all its objectives. A simple example of assurance could be performing an audit. We now look at the connection of the seven principles with the assurance theme. The leading with purpose connects with envisioning leadership and communicating it. Therefore, this theme designs the three lines of defense to support the leadership decision-making. Collaboration across, across boundaries. That is about developing a unified view of assurance for the program, wherein all concerned stakeholders participate in developing the assurance. Dealing with ambiguity, in other words, dealing with risks, is done by adopting a risk-based approach to assurance that focuses resources on the areas where greater certainty would be valuable. Aligning with priorities would deal with prioritizing assurance observations and action plans to reflect risks so that the program can deal with emerging information. Deploying diverse skills is about allocating the right resources to assurance activities, balancing independent specialist knowledge and cost, whereas realized measurable benefits is connected with focusing assurance on the risks affecting outcomes of benefit over time. And lastly, bringing pace and value is about planning assurance that is timely and appropriate so that the program's changes and the ongoing business operations are, are in balance to each other. The assurance approach. All the approaches in a program depend on the nature of the program and the organization involved in the program. Such approaches answer several questions. In particular, the assurance approach will address the required corporate assurance and controls of all the investing organizations in a program, such as the assurance requirements flowing from the corporate governance of the investing organizations, the responsibilities for assurance, the accountability, the delegated levels of authority for the program governance boards, their supporting offices and certain individual roles. It'll also clarify how the program governance boards and supporting offices will work with the assurance providers outside the program organization structure, such as any outsourced internal audit function which is outside the program boundary, but within the organization boundary. And sometimes such audits can be also from external consultants as well. Also the assurance approach will clarify the lines of defense, particularly what are the assurance activities to be provided by each of the three lines of defense. 
We begin with question number 25, which is a driver for assurance that should be used to assure portfolio and capacity management? A, a community of practice, B, a risk appetite assessment, C, a capability assessment, or D, a dependency assessment? The clue word in the question is the word assure, assuring the portfolio and capacity management as part of the assurance. And what would drive that? Option A, a community of practice, is a learning network of people who share a skill and who improve as they interact and learn from each other on a regular basis. So that would be incorrect. A risk appetite assessment is connected to the program's risk appetite, which is the amount of risk the investing organizations is willing to accept in pursuing the benefits of the program. Therefore, that doesn't seem to be connected with the assurance for the portfolio and capacity management. A capability assessment, on the other hand, drives the assurance activity of portfolio and capacity management. It, uh, it's about the capabilities. And therefore, it connects well with the assurance for the portfolio and capacity management. Option D, dependency assessment, is more about assessing dependencies, which mean an activity, output, decision, or resource that is required to achieve an aspect of the program. Therefore, it would not be D either.